All right, welcome to another video in circular motion in our advanced mechanics series of videos. And what we're going to be looking at here is totem tennis. This is a game that I loved when I was growing up and involved a pole. And on the top of that pole, it had a metallic spiral. And on that metallic spiral, you had this. Okay, you had a tennis ball connected to a piece of string. And of course, I've taken the metallic object off, but usually it's like a metallic clip. That metallic clip goes in there. And of course, you and a competitor had a bat and you hit it backwards and forwards and you had to hit it so that it spun around down the spiral and whoever won was the person who got to the top um, of the spiral. And the other person would win if they got to the bottom of the spiral. And so uh, you smacking it around, you know, was quite fun. So in this here, we've got circular motion by the ball as it's going around this pole. Okay. So this question here, the string is 1.5 metres long, the tennis ball is 150 grams, and we have a 60 degree angle at this moment in time. And we're going to do some calculations there um, to see if we can work out a variety of things, such as the velocity of the ball, how fast is the ball going around this um, game. Now this is actually making a what's called conic pendulum. Right, a conical pendulum. And so this produces a cone shape, if you can visualize that going around, and it's a pendulum. So we have conic pendulum principles operating here. Now, let's just see if we can do some, some physics. If we look at this here, knowing the angle and the length enables us to, enables us to find the radius. We can find the radius of our circle. We can also find the centripetal force, since we know its mass, okay? And we can find its velocity, right? So we're going to be finding its tangential velocity. That's what we mean by when we say how fast is it going. It's tangential velocity, right? I'll draw a straight line for that coming out this way, okay? At any moment in time. All right, so let's see if we can do that. So let's just get rid of that drip. All right. Let's see if we can work out the radius. So if we uh, draw this uh, draw this here so it's a little bit clearer, like that, and we have our ball right at the end there. This is 1.5. That's 60, and this is the radius. So we have R is equal to its opposite there and hypotenuse. Okay. So R is equal to opposite over hypotenuse is sine. All right, so we can say R is equal to 1.5 sine 60. And then we do that, we throw that in the calculator and that comes out to be 1.3 meters. So our radius here is 1.3 meters. Okay. What about, how do we find central pedal acceleration? Well, let's draw another diagram here, a bit of a close-up of the ball. So here we have the ball. Whoops, let's see, I'll take these lids off so you don't keep popping your eardrums every time I put the lid on and off. So here we have the ball. Then we have the tension in the string. Uh, what other forces do we have? Well, we have gravity going down, Fg. And of course, that equals mg. Then in this tension force, we have the components of that. So we have the force tension in the x direction. And then, of course, we have the force tension in the y direction. So we have the components of that force there. And this is 60 degrees here. Right? OK. So they're the forces that's going on there. Well, if we think about it, this ball is going around. It's not changing height. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's going around at that moment in time. So Fg in the y component is equal and opposite to Fy, Fty. So we could so we could label this Fg here, right? And we know we can calculate that as mg. And the mass is 150 grams, so 0 0.15 times gravity, 9.8. And then we end up with 1.47 newtons. So we have that 
value there. So we have a value, we have an angle, and therefore we can work out this force here, FTX. Let's do that. And so it's opposite over adjacent, so we've got tan now. So we can say that FTX is equal to 1.47 tan 60, and that works out to be 2.55 newtons. Now, this force going that way must be the net force because it's not going up, it's not going down, but it is undergoing circular motion. So this inward acting net force is actually the centripetal force. So FTX, the net force that's causing it to change, is the same as the centripetal force. So this is the centripetal force. Okay. And remember that the centripetal force had the equation F equals mv squared on r. Well, we know of that. We know a um, value for that now, 2.55. We know the mass of the ball. We know the radius. So therefore, we can find the velocity. So let's do that. So rearranging this equation here first. Let's just start off with this here like that. And then we're going to times both sides by r and divide by m. So you get fr divided by m. And then, of course, we take the square root of that. And so let's do the force. Well, the centripetal force we calculated was 2.55 times the radius. We said the radius was 1.3 divided by the mass, which is 150 grams. And what do we get? 4.7 meters per second. All right, it's starting to dry out a little bit. So we have, that's our velocity of the ball, our tangential velocity of the ball at that moment in time. So from this conic pendulum, knowing the angle and the length of the string, we were able to calculate the velocity of the ball. We were able to calculate the centripetal force that causes the ball to change direction. We could find, of course, knowing the velocity, the centripetal acceleration. So we could just call, we could go like this, v squared on r, and we could come up with a centripetal acceleration value. We're going to do another one, and this one is known as the flying pig, but we're going to do that in another video because these principles we've just looked at are similar to the flying pig. So I'll see you in the next video.